Get ready to reminisce. Here are 10 of the best retro games you can play right now. There's something pure and immediate about older games. Releases from an era where microtransaction meant paying for something with small change. And in this video, we'll be looking at 10 titles with their pixelated feet planted firmly in the past. So what do we mean by retro? Well, if you're watching this video, we probably don't need to say that you can go back and play Doom, Half-Life or System Shock 2 and still have an incredible time. Instead, we've opted for a mix of classic arcade, PC and home console games that have been tweaked to bring them up to date. Titles that are playable, fun and available now on PC, but that retain the clean simplicity of their classic iterations. We've also avoided new games that have a retro feel, because that should be a totally separate video. Subscribe to the channel now to see that when it arrives. Here are 10 great retro games you should play today. It's important to mention this purple fire breather early. We didn't want the video to drag on. <laughs> Let it be said that Louise wrote this bit of the script. Anyway, the Spyro Reignited trilogy is not dissimilar to plugging yourself directly into the 90s. Slurp sunny delight at the same time for the true experience. Just remember to brush your teeth afterwards. Okay, no problem. I'll collect a few talismans, give Ripto the old hot foot, and be in Dragon Shores by lunchtime. Spyro's adventures feel and look exactly as you remember them. They do sound a little different though. Spyro Year of the Dragon voice actor and SpongeBob SquarePants himself, Tom Kennedy returned to the series and re-recorded the full trilogy to keep Spyro consistent as well as brilliant at flying and hunting down eggs. Quite simply, the whole experience is a colourful joy. Everything you ever adored about the Flamey series has been lovingly recreated. And be warned, if you still love collectibles, you're going to be spending a lot of time picking everything up. I mean, a lot. And don't be afraid. Afraid? Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. It might be a modern reboot, but Samurai Shodan is a katana slice love letter to those classic 2D SNK fighting games. It retains the technical ebb and flow of earlier iterations, full of ringing blades and dramatic encounters. But the crisp presentation and elegant art style make it look and feel like a modern title. Throw in the sort of fighting game backgrounds you want to stop and explore, a stack of varied colourful characters, and some deeply cinematic special moves, and you have a game that celebrates the 1993 original without ever feeling dated or frustrating. And yes, there are loads of other fighting games out there that tick the same boxes for a retro list. But we don't really need to tell you to go back and play Street Fighter 3 Third Strike do we? Plus, you can roll out Samurai Shodan's 3D costumes for extra old school points. And the victory poses are, well, just look at them. How could we mention Spyro without mentioning a certain orange marsupial? Yes, you can play glorious versions of all three of the Wumpa Fruit Loving Creatures adventures in the Crash Bandicoot and Sane trilogy. Are you there, Crash? 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 Are you there, Crash? It might make you feel old, but the fact that Crash 4, the aptly named It's About Time, is the first new Crash game in 22 years means that these colourful jump fests are officially in nostalgia territory. Whether you're heading back to 1996 with a crisp HD wonder along Ensanity Beach or enjoying Crash's later escapades, this is a delightful sprint down memory lane. Your floating friend Aku Aku is even more important than ever before as you try and relearn the reaction speeds you once maintained two decades ago. Sadly, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled still hasn't made it to PC, but given how long it will take you to get through all three of these, it might be out by the time you're done. Retro 
retro games often come in one of two flavors. They either require such pixel-perfect precision that failure is all but inevitable, see Crash Bandicoot above, or they test the boundaries of logic in ways that are somehow more worrying when you get things right. The wonderful Grim Fandango isn't that obtuse, but some of its puzzles definitely feel like they're from the try everything and hope for the best school of deduction. But luckily, everything else here is the right kind of vintage. You know, Manny, I could make this car a little faster if you wanted. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. There's a sense of depth and class here that makes Grim Fandango the gaming equivalent of a beautifully made antique cabinet. The script is impeccable, the performances are sassy, and the characters feel fully fleshed out. Well, flesh is probably the wrong word in Manny's case, but you get the gist. If you're looking to catch up on classic games you might have missed, playing Grim Fandango is the cultural milestone akin to watching the Maltese Falcon for the first time. Oh, second thought, I want to upgrade my package. Sorry, Bruno, but you didn't qualify for anything better. But here, have this complimentary mug. We couldn't have this list without featuring everyone's favorite speedy hedgehog. And in honor of that, I wanted to do this whole entry at two times speed, but decided against it for your sake as well as mine. Increase the playback speed in YouTube if you want. Celebrating the game's 25th anniversary, Sonic Mania leapt into 2017 to bring us a full dose of frantic retro platforming. Although this is a new entry to the franchise, rather than a remake, there are some familiar levels and plenty of recognizable Sonic-style gimmicks. The boss fights are as chaotic as ever, your favorite characters are there, and the levels could definitely be described as manic in the most lovable way possible. And that's what we're all really there for, isn't it? The moment when Sonic's legs start spinning in a blur and you begin running so fast you're not sure if you're really controlling the game anymore or just holding on for dear life which inevitably ends in landing on spikes and a loss of all those golden rings you just earned. Oops, you'll earn them back. LucasArts has brought us many beloved classics over the years, especially in the point-and-click adventure genre. But one of their most beloved entries is the 1993's Day of the Tentacle, a sequel to their original wacky manic mansion. And thanks to a 2016 re-release, you can enjoy it all over again, or for the very first time. If you have no idea what this colorful cartoon is though, you'll be forgiven. It basically follows three characters as they try to stop an evil, sentient purple tentacle. The clue is in the name. To save the world, you'll have to jump back through time and utilize all three friends to solve puzzles, sending items and picking up clues in different centuries. Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. The whole thing is like diving into your favorite kids' TV show, full of wicked humor, crazy stories, and, well, just look at it. Don't let that lull you into a false sense of security, as Day of the Tentacle will take some serious head-scratching problem-solving. So put on your hoagie-approved thinking cap and have a trip back in time, many times. You're a good-looking human, Errol, but you know the rules. You're out of the show. Consume enough media about games and you'll hear people talk about the loop, that compelling, repetitive cycle of play that means we're happy to do the same thing over and over because it feels great. Well, Pac-Man's gameplay loop might be 40 years old, that's almost as old as Matt, but it remains as irresistible as it did way back in 1980. You munch dots, flee ghosts, then enjoy a fleeting moment of revenge as you turn the table on your spectral opponents. And in Pac-Man Championship Edition DX, that simple act is elevated to a level of dynamism that feels like pouring an energy drink into your eyeballs while riding a roller coaster. 
like so many great retro games, you fire it up expecting to play for 10 minutes. Then the next thing you know, it's four in the morning and all you can see when you close your eyes is an insatiable neon puck chasing ghosts in the dark. If only we had a name for that sensation. Recently, one of the star attractions in our Best Games If You Love To Organize Things video, Tetris Effect also slots perfectly into the best retro games you can play right now. It might have more bells and whistles than your original experiences of the game, squinting at that Game Boy screen in the back of your parents' car or worrying about how many AA batteries you had with you. But the core experience is still here. It just looks bolder, brighter, and more alluring than ever. Whether you're playing in VR with the dolphins actually inside your brain, or in good old-fashioned 2D, Tetris Effect feels like being part of the Matrix instead of just spinning blocks. Every move and rotating victory changes the beat of the music and the world around you, making every T-spin matter more than ever. And no, you don't have to play at relentless difficulty, but hey, where's the fun in that? If you're a big Planet Coaster fan, chances are you played one game and one game only when you were growing up. And unlike Jack Skellington in The Nightmare Before Christmas, you will never grow weary of the sound of screams in Roller Coaster Tycoon. The good news is that if you don't always fancy the ultra granularity of Frontier's glossy theme park em up, Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic is like a giant mascot hug of nostalgia. This grid of metal track and the wafting, gentle smell of vomit is where dreams are made. Here you can position dinosaurs, add new rides, or just marvel at a fully functioning Six Flags Magic Mountain, complete with the gravity-defying Superman Escape from Krypton. Or, you know, you could just build yourself a sedate little lakeside park with a merry-go-round and a ferris wheel. We won't judge much. Baldur's Gate 2 is a classic must-play for RPG fans. Set in the Dungeons & Dragons Forgotten Realms, this isometric fantasy originally climbed out of a wizard's cage and onto our screens at the turn of the century. Fitting for such a dark, magical entry to the series. What should be done with them, sir? They are deviants. Let them rot in Spellhole. And in 2013, we got a remake to make it a little more accessible for modern audiences. There's certainly a lot less squinting. And, of course, it kept all the things that make it a beloved retro RPG. There's reams of text to read, intricate stories to follow, and tough strategic decisions to make in every fight. You watch your characters shuffle across the screen below you, gradually dispelling a darkness to reveal the map and journey across a hugely varied world. It's bound to give your weekly tabletop sessions a run for its money, and is the perfect thing for reliving being a nerd in the 90s. Except long-winded RPGs are cool now, guys, so you can stop bullying me. Calm down, Corvail. Mr. F don't like you killing people in the streets. Shut your mouth, dwarf. As for you, I said get your stinking hide out of my way! So, those were 10 games that could make us almost believe we've stepped 20 years back in time. Let us know in the comments your favorite retro titles, and if you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a like. For more videos on games from the past, present, and future, subscribe to the channel, and if you do already subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss when an upload lands.